Jedrowitz is celebrating spring with a polymer clay project. It's adorable polymer clay peepers. I'm delighted to welcome the Cool to Craft Creative Play Muse. It's Candace J. Thanks, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my studio. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cute little nest with some hungry chicks in it. And it's all going to be made out of a water bottle, crinkle paper, polymer clay, aluminum foil, glue, feathers, jewels, flowers, twigs, who knows what else. You gotta watch. Sit back and relax, because here we go. This project starts with a water bottle. I'm going to cut the bottom off. And I'm going to do it like Eco Heidi Borchers tells us to do it. Start it with a craft knife and then use scissors to cut it off. Okay, trim that little bit off there. And now I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to do that for two reasons. The first is when you put your crinkle paper in to make your nest, you don't want any clear showing through. Oops. So I'm using a dark brown paint and I'm just going to hold on to it. And go all the way around. This by no means has to be a perfect paint job. The second reason that I paint it is that I want a nice rough surface that the glue will stick to when you go to glue on the crinkles. So here's the nest base. And we'll put that aside to dry. Here's a nest base that's already dried and it's from a, a little bit larger water bottle. So you can use any size at all that you want. Now I'm gonna start with the glue. You can put a regular base on this like glue a felt circle on the bottom if you wanted to. But I decided to glue the crinkles all the way around. And I'm just gonna squish it down in there. And then I'm gonna start folding up around the edges. And just press it like that. And now I'm going to glue the inside. You want to make sure that you get the top of the nest base so you don't have any sharp edges. And then do the inside walls. And now I'm just going to start folding the crinkle paper in. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now I have one that's already dried. And once it's dried, then you want to go back through back into the center and you want to pull out any loose ones or anything that doesn't look quite like you want it. And then when you get things like these you can just cut them off. But you want to leave it nice and full and it looks like I have plenty of space to put my little chicks in. Here I have everything I need to make one of these cute little chicks. I started out with a piece of aluminum foil that I molded into a little gumdroppy shape. And I'm gonna take 
a piece of polymer clay that's a mixture of all of my leftover clays from my scrap bag. So it's kind of a grayish brownish color that you would expect a baby chick to be. And I'm just folding it around the foil. You can cover up the bottom if you like, but you don't have to because it's not going to be seen. The other benefit of using an armature like this is it uses less clay and doesn't have to bake as long. There's the start of the little body. Now I've got a piece for the head, but because the little chick is reaching his neck way up to get some worms as the mom brings them in to the nest, I'm going to make him a long neck. And at the end of the neck, where it will sit on his shoulders, I'm pinching out a little flange all the way around. And, oops, got a crease on the top there. Just going to smooth it out. Working with polymer clays, or any kind of clay really, it's essential to learn how to handle the clay as though you were handling a baby chick or even a baby chick egg very gently. Every squish you make leaves a mark. So what I want to do to give him a little character is squish the head from side to side like that and his mouth will go here. Now I'm going to put it on his shoulders and I'm going to use a knitting needle that has a little bit of fluff on the end of it. There we go. This doesn't have to be perfect, because it's going to be so cute. All right, so now we have a head on the body. These two pieces are going to become wings. And to do that, I'm going to make kind of a longish teardrop shape. And then I'm going to flatten it, pinch the edge, the little end, into a point and shape it out and then I'm going to make a little knobby elbow because the baby birds have those little scrawny wings and here you want to make the choice of forward or back whichever way you like and you're also going to smooth and you can use just about anything that has a smooth edge to do this with Another wing coming up, flatten it, make the point stick out, make his little bony elbow, and attach it to his shoulder. Again, I'm going to smooth it just a little bit. You might be able to tell here that there have been some glittery clays put into the scrap bag because he has a little tiny bit of glitter to him. All right, now I have this little bit of yellow that's going to become a beak. And to do that, I'm going to roll a teardrop shape, flatten the end, squish it a little bit, and then make corners. Just like that. And then it's going to go on up here. And I'm going to give it a firm little push. Oh, he's got some brown clay on his beak. That's OK. And then I'm going to take these two tiny little balls of clay and flatten them. And they go to the sides of the beak because they're his fat little cheeks. And they can be smoothed on. Or not, if you like the look of having them just stick out. Now let's open the mouth. And I'm going to use a craft knife for that. And then I'm going to cut it about in the middle, maybe a little bit below the middle. That did not quite go the right way. That's OK. Let's redo the point, because that's how art goes. Sometimes you have to adjust. 
So let's cut it open and start to open it up a little bit like that. And then I have this little tiny piece that's going to be his tongue that I'm going to insert in there. And I'm going to use the end of the knitting needle, needle, there we go, to make his little tongue. And the last thing that goes on are his eyes and they're little balls of black clay. And I like the way that they look kind of sticking out like that. So he has a cute little face. And here are my three chicks ready to go. Now you'll bake them according to the directions on your clay. And when they're out and cooled, we'll finish it up. Here are my little birds all baked and out of the oven and cooled. And I have here some down that I've trimmed off of some feathers. So I'm going to give them each just a little bit of glue on their heads. Just a dab. And on their little wingy elbows. You don't have to limit yourself to this. You can use your judgment and decide where you want to have the little fluffy down pieces. And just stick them on there. And you can pull off any extra that you have that you don't want after it's dry. Yeah, it gets kind of a comedy routine when you get the glue stuck on your hands and then it won't go on the birds. Yeah. Funny, funny. Right? Get on there. <laughs> cute. Cute, cute. All right, now we're going to place them in the nest. And to do that, I'm going to put some glue in the nest. A couple of big globs. And place the birds in. <laughs> there they are, cutie pies. Now just take a little bit of a glossy sealer and touch the eyes. And when that's dry, it'll make the little little black eyes pop. They'll be so cute. Now, you can stop here, or you can add another dimension to it. I have a bunch of little twigs that I cut off of a, a vine that I used to have growing by my house. And it could stick down in here if you wanted. And you could add some little flowers with a dab of glue. And that would be very, very cute. Or you can leave it as is. There's those little guys. Oh, I just love them. These guys are so cute with their fuzzy little heads. You know, sometimes I feel guilty telling my family that I'm working hard in the studio and shouldn't be disturbed. This is just too much fun. I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope that you're inspired to try something like it. And I hope that if you do, I get to see it. You can always email me with a photo if you like, because I would love to see at Candace at CoolToCraft.com.